Terror birds were flightless, carnivorous birds that roamed the planet from 53 million years ago to about 100,000 years ago. At one point in time, they ruled the lands, and, as their name suggests, some were terrifying. The term terror bird refers to a family of birds called forest racids. This family is now extinct, with the nearest living relatives thought to be the crane-like Siriemus. The prehistoric family was broad and diverse, and species have been added and removed from the family over the years. The birds within the terror bird family ranged in size from 1 to 3 meters, or 3 to 10 feet tall. Some weighed as little as 5 kilograms, or 11 pounds, and as much as 180 kilograms, or 400 pounds. Despite differences in size, these birds all had the same appearance. An elongated neck that could stretch a considerable distance, long legs, stumpy flightless wings, and a large head with a hooked beak. They predominantly lived in South America, but with the formation of the Isthmus of Panama, it was thought, until recently, they spread into North America 2.7 million years ago. But interestingly, fossil evidence now suggests that the terror birds made it to North America from the south before the land bridge formed and connected the two continents. How did the birds make it across? Could they have swum or rafted? A series of volcanoes could have paved the way, offering stepping stones for the birds as they swam short distances between them before making landfall in North America. But who knows for sure? Due to the large number of fossils found throughout the Americas, it was once widely accepted that they originated there. But even this has now come under debate. More recent fossil evidence has found remnants of terror birds in Europe and Africa, and possibly even Antarctica. This makes the origins of the terror birds debatable. Answers will likely fall into place as more fossil evidence and analysis comes to light. It seems that there is a great amount of uncertainty when it comes to terror birds and their origins. What is certain is that some of these birds would have been a formidable sight, although the smallest were slightly larger than today's secretary birds. With their crane-like necks and long, spindly legs, others were much larger and meatier. The largest ever bird skull found belonged to a terror bird. It measured 71 centimeters, or 28 inches across, and had a curved eagle's beak 46 centimeters, or 18 inches long. But could these terror birds survive today? To answer this, we need to consider their diet and the habitat and climate in which they lived. The most numerous terror bird fossils are found in South America during the Miocene and early Pliocene. The birds flourished in South America. The savanna-like conditions must have been ideal, and the food plentiful. But what food did terror birds eat? All terror birds were thought to be meat-eaters. The shape of their beaks is similar to today's carnivorous birds, such as birds of prey, like eagles, and scavengers like vultures. The formation of the long neck and skull suggests that the terror birds could not shake their prey from side to side. Instead, it is thought that they used powerful downward force to tear meat from a carcass and even to immobilize the prey when it was alive. Scientists have uncovered petrified masses not dissimilar from owl pellets, which have contained the bones of deer-sized mammals and large rodents. If these pellets belonged to a terror bird, then they could have regurgitated indigestible matter, much the same way that owls do today. They may have had the ability to hunt down prey on the ground, Although some scientists reported that the lower part of the legs made running difficult, more recent research modeled the running action of the birds and estimated the larger species could run up to 97 kilometers or 60 miles per hour. The largest of the terror birds, the forest resins, could have preyed on some of the world's megafauna that was available at the time. The smaller species would have fed on medium to small prey under 20 kilograms in weight. Today, the largest bird of prey is the Andean condor. It predominantly scavenges on large dead carcasses, but will also hunt small mammals and raid other birds' nests for eggs. Its beak is similar to that of the terror bird, used for ripping flesh from bone. If terror birds lived in South America today, they may compete with condors for large kills, but they were more conducive to the pursuit predatory lifestyle. They would probably need large open space like that in the Llanos, a vast open tropical grassland found near the east of the Andes. There, 
They could chase their prey, which today could consist of white-tailed deer, giant anteaters, and capybaras. Regarding diet alone, it is likely that some of the prehistoric terror birds could survive today. The smaller species may be more likely to survive in today's world, with more challenges for the giant birds, such as finding enough food and space in which to hunt. Now consider the climate. During the Miocene, global temperatures were warmer than the preceding Oligocene period and subsequent Pliocene. This change in temperature and weather caused a shift in the landscapes. Forests gave way to open grasslands and savannas. These open spaces were beneficial to the fast, predatory terror birds who, we believe, chased down their prey. The rise of the Andes Mountains created the rain shadow effect and provided a wetter environment than before. The global temperature was 7 to 8 degrees Celsius warmer than it is today, but the climate as a whole wasn't too dissimilar. In fact, scientists are looking at the biological changes that occurred during the Miocene to help them predict how Earth will respond to modern-day global warming. On the face of it, it looks as though terror birds could survive today's climate. However, without detailed information about the ecology of terror birds, the small differences in climate could be detrimental to their survival. For example, having an environment 7 to 8 degrees cooler than the Miocene could have an effect on the bird's egg hatch rate, their metabolism, and even their ability to hunt. They became extinct about 2 million years ago, during the Pleistocene, when the Earth rapidly cooled. Could this change in climate have led to their demise? Maybe the terror birds today would need to find hotter places to survive on Earth. But it's not just about climate, it's about their habitat too. What sort of habitat did terror birds thrive in? Are there any places like that available today? As already mentioned, it was thought that terror birds dominated the open plains. Their style of hunting was not conducive to forests or mountainous regions. Today, the Cerrado is the largest savanna region in South America. It is a hugely biodiverse region that covers part of central Brazil and parts of Paraguay and Bolivia. Over 200 species of mammal live in the Cerrado, not to mention hundreds of reptiles, birds, amphibians, and fish. It has a semi-humid tropical climate and covers an area of 2 million square kilometers. Places like this could provide the right sort of habitat for terror birds. In conclusion, we believe that terror birds could survive today. The largest of the species may not survive, but the smaller ones perhaps could. Their demise has been hotly debated over the years. Some blame the Great American Biotic Interchange, which occurred when the land bridge formed between North and South America, allowing animals to cross over continents. Animals that had never met before were suddenly able to integrate and compete with one another. The terror birds, that had been at the top of the food chain in South America for so long, now found themselves competing with the likes of saber-toothed cats. However, fossil remains show that these giant birds didn't falter at the first sign of the biotic interchange. They survived for thousands of years afterward. However, this wasn't the only thing that the birds had to overcome. As well as the formation of the land bridge and the change in fauna that came with it, there were considerable changes in the global climate that were pressuring the existing species on the planet. The pressures from changing temperatures and other predators could have proved too much for these prehistoric birds. If given the chance, it's possible that terror birds could survive once more on planet Earth. But, like so many species before and after them, they have had their time. And now it's time to treasure the species we share this planet with. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.